live welcome or welcome back to my channel i've not put out a video in so long so i'm excited to finally be filming again i actually already filmed this once and i just didn't really like it so i'm gonna try it again and hopefully it turns out better than the last one today's video i just wanted to talk about sorority recruitment my experience and just to tell you guys what it's like i'm specifically at my school i go to tcu and i am a sophomore so i went through recruitment like i'm pc 18 so like two times ago i guess so i did recruitment not too long ago it's a super fun experience for most people just a little disclaimer this is just how it went for me i would say most girls at tcu specifically do have good experiences but of course there are, are a handful every year that don't it's different for everybody but i mostly just want to talk about really the process and how that works at tcu but i literally haven't filmed in so long and i kind of like forget how to do it so <laughs> okay so basically in this video i'm going to go through like a couple different big topics and in the description i'll put like the timestamps for when i start talking about all those things so if you don't want to watch all of this then you can just skip to the parts that you want to watch so yeah okay well, let's just get started all right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is just like the process and how it works, what the days are like and all of that. Again, I'm talking specifically at TCU. A lot of schools are super similar, I think, in the way they do it, especially like surrounding schools. If you're doing fall recruitment, it's like, I think it's pretty similar everywhere. So recruitment at TCU is a full week, Sunday to Sunday um, process, but you get a break on Saturday. So the actual talking, like recruiting days are Sunday through Friday. Then you have a day off on Saturday to just like come chill, and then bid day is on Sunday. Before you get to start recruitment, you obviously have to register, and there is a fee to do that. I don't know how much it is, I don't remember, but you sign up and do that, and then you're good to go. And you get to school a week before classes start, so classes usually start around like August 20th here, so you'll get here like a week before that, usually on the Saturday, and then you're gonna move in all of Saturday, and then recruitment starts like Sunday, I think like afternoonish like 12 or so when you're moving in or a few days before you move in you'll get a call from your row gamma and a row gamma is basically like a small group leader every year at tcu there's like a thousand girls that go through recruitment so they break you up into groups of like 20 or so and then in your groups of 20 there will be a row gamma who is an older girl that's in a sorority but you won't find out what sorority she's in until the end of the week and basically the road gamers are just there to help you talk through any problems and just be your guide for the week and answer any questions you have and just like be your friend. So they're super helpful. They're trained really well and they can help you with like any issues that you have. So they're going to give you a call like a few days before recruitment starts and just introduce themselves and tell you any information that you need to know for Sunday. And then you start the rounds on Sunday, like I said. The night before, on Saturday night, you're gonna have like a little meeting. You get to meet your row game, meet the other girls in your group. You do a little bit of like training. It sounds scary, it's really not. You just like talk to the girl next to you for like a minute to so make sure that you are ready for conversation. But basically they just like talk you through the week and encourage you that you're gonna do great because you're gonna do great. So then that's Saturday night. Sunday is when you actually start. I've said this like three times now, but Sunday is when you start. That's the first day of round one. There's four rounds in the entire recruitment process, but it's six days of talking, and that's because rounds one and two are both two days long. So you could call it like round 1A, round 1B, round 2A, round 2B. Round 1A is on Sunday, and round 1B is on Monday. And they're basically the same thing, um, but it's split into two days because we have 13 sororities here, and you talk to half of them on one day and half of them on the other day. The first round, everybody goes to every single sorority. Round two is also two days, and this is where you learn about the philanthropies. So you start with 13, and then round two is when you start narrowing it down, which I'm gonna get to in a second. This might be kind of confusing when I first talk about it, but basically, round two, you're gonna have a max of 10 sororities, but most girls have less than that, but you're gonna have like up to 10. And then round three, your max on Thursday is six houses, but again, most girls have less than that. And then Friday, which is prep night, uh, you're going to be down to two houses or one house. All the days usually start around like 8 a.m., um, but some, some of them start later. And you're going to end anywhere between like 3 in the afternoon or like 10 at night. But... You're not gonna go from like 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. That's not a thing. It just depends on the day. They're all different lengths. Hopefully this is all making sense. It's like really confusing to try and break it down. 
Okay, now I'm going to go through what actually happens when you are talking to the girls in the house because that's like what I had no idea. What you do is your row gamma walks your little small group down to whatever house you're going to. And at TCU, the Greek village is all in like one area, so they're all super close. It's not like you're like walking down the street or anything. It's like literally right there. They're going to line you up in alphabetical order. So I was always first, which was like terrifying. <laughs> um, so I'm like standing in front of my first house and I'm just like, okay, whatever. And then the row gamma comes up and she like bangs on the door and she's like 30 seconds and you're like oh my gosh like it's so loud like screaming and then all of a sudden behind the doors i can just hear these girls like yelling like chanting so it was scary at first um so they start basically screaming their songs at you kind of like what you probably have seen on twitter <laughs> it's really funny the doors will open and then the row gamma like sends you in and you start walking they walk in and basically a girl will just pop out of nowhere and she'll be like hi my name's you know hannah or whatever and like welcome to this house and then she'll guide you to a chair and then you sit down and you just start talking that's really it it's really scary at first but it's not and then when you leave the girl will also guide you out of the house so you basically just do what they tell you to do it's scary on the first round because you have no idea what's about to happen but it's like really not bad now I'm just going to go through what each round kind of looks like and break it down a little bit. Round one is two days long and that's when you're just meeting all the sororities. The conversations are super, super quick. Um, typically you talk to like three to four girls this round in each event, in each house. Some sororities do more, some sororities do less, but I would say basically every house it's around three to four. It's like really surface level conversations. Um, so it gets kind of hard to cut down after this round because you have to cut down three sororities after that um and they all kind of seem the same at this point because they're all i mean they are pretty similar that's what round one looks like and then round two like i said is also two days and this is philanthropy round so this is when you're learning about all the different sororities philanthropies and if you don't know what philanthropy is it's basically just like service if there's anything that particularly interests you that can be important when you're picking a sorority because you can be as involved in the philanthropy as you want. The conversations that day are still fairly quick. You're probably gonna be talking to all new girls that day. There's a chance you'll talk to a girl that you talked to in round one, but at this point, most sororities wanna expose you to like as many different personalities as they can so that you can find someone that you click with and hopefully wanna come back to their house. Okay, so I don't know if I said this, but the events get longer each day. So the first round, like where you're seeing all the houses, the events are probably like 20, 25 minutes. Um, it goes by so fast and then round two the one i just talked about it's probably like 30 or 35 minutes once you get to round three so this is only one day and this is when you're down to a maximum of six sororities most girls have less like i said and the round or the event is probably like 45 minutes or so i can't remember the exact numbers you might be talking to a girl that you already talked to um, there's like a decent chance of that. It really just depends on the sorority, but it is nice to come in and see a familiar faces at this point And yeah round three. Yeah, it's basically the same as all the other ones You're more comfortable in the houses that you're in though. It narrowed down like over half of your options So that's kind of a relief because you've already been there twice So it's just like a little bit more comfortable and then round four is at night it starts at like 3 i think but it can go into like 10 p.m if you're unlucky <laughs> at this point you're down to a maximum of two sororities these days um the time you spend in each house is about an hour long it's a really serious night a lot of girls cry just because they usually like have the lights kind of dimmed and like the first day it's like super chatty and like happy but then once you get to prep it's like super serious and this time they talk about their sisterhood and like the values they have in their sorority what's important to them it depends on the sorority but a lot of houses you're just talking to one girl for an hour straight which i was literally terrified of i was like what like i don't want to talk to a girl i don't know for an hour i can't even talk to girls i do know for an hour like that's okay that's not true but like that's hard but it's gonna be a girl that you've probably already talked to um i would say it's really rare to talk to someone on pref that you've never talked to i did cry in one of the houses i had on pref uh i don't know why it's just like emotional so lastly so that's friday is pref night and then saturday like i said you get a little break and then sunday is bid day on bid day you meet in the ballroom that we have on campus and basically you walk in and it's so much fun you get a little envelope you sit with your small group and your rogamma and the rogamas do a reveal where they tell everybody what sorority they're in 
you have to sit on your envelope for a while which is really painful <laughs> but then um, everybody opens them all at once and you get to run over there's like tables lining the room for every single sorority so you run to the table that belongs to your sorority and then you'll meet your whole pledge class and it's so much fun quick note as to how this is going to pan out if you can see or as you can see i should say there are 13 chapters sprawled around the room once you've opened your bid card go ahead and flock to that table One by one, each sorority gets called out to run outside, and basically there's like a common at TCU. I'll put in like a clip. <laughs> it's like this big field kind of, and basically you'll start at one end and the whole rest of the sorority will be at the other end and you'll just like sprint towards them and then you'll go do bid day stuff with your sorority it's different for everybody um some people go like roller skating some people have a pool party so yeah that is basically the rounds broken down that took so long that was 20 minutes of footage so hopefully i can cut that down a little bit but now i'm gonna go through um I want to go through what to wear, but I think I might make a separate video for that just because I feel like this is already going to be so long. So, comment below if you want a separate video on what to wear to sorority recruitment because I can for sure do that. And now I'm just going to go over like some helpful information because some of the things I probably just said in the last 20 minutes was a little bit confusing. Um, so, I just want to go over that. So, multiple times I mentioned how on certain rounds you can have a maximum of this number of sororities so it goes from 13 to 10 to 6 to 2 um, but those are your max numbers when you go through sorority recruitment there's this thing called mutual selection and for me it didn't make sense until I saw it on paper so I'm sorry if I explained this really badly so you start with all 13 sororities every single girl has 13 sororities during round one so at the end of Monday night at the end of round one you go to the basketball arena and basically you'll get a sheet of paper and you write down your top 10 sororities like in no particular order just like your top 10 and then your bottom three but your bottom three are ranked okay so basically you have your top 10 i'm gonna try and like is there like a visual i can put in right here so you have your top 10 um in no particular order it's just like the 10 that you like the best and then you have your three that you don't like the best and you rank those three and the first one is the one that you dislike the least and then the second one and then the third one so the third one is the one that you like really don't vibe with like you just don't click with them or you know whatever and that's fine like that's the point of recruitment is to find out where you belong but let's say you go to round two this happened to me so let's say one of your top 10 sororities decides to drop you which can be for literally a hundred different reasons it probably has nothing to do with your personality the first ranked bottom one will move up into your top 10 list for round two which is super common like i said that happened to me so you end up going back to a house that you maybe didn't love but maybe that's for the best like maybe you end up loving them and that's happened to girls as well like they'll end up like pledging a sorority they wanted to drop it can happen it's you just gotta trust the process and let's say that the three that you didn't vibe with like also didn't really vibe with you so those are gone like they dropped you you dropped them like they're out so now you have your top 10 let's say that one of the ones that you put in your top 10 like also decided to drop you because they have a grade cut off or something so now you're gonna have nine houses on day two so that's what i mean when i say like you're gonna max out at 10 and a lot of girls don't just because the way the process works and my laundry is about to be done so i'm gonna have to go get that sorry if the angle changes at all the other thing that i want to talk about is like letters of recommendation slash riffs this is something that i literally knew nothing about before i started recruitment and then i found out about all of it and i was like stressed out to the max i was a senior in high school and i was like worried about all of this stuff and it is like kind of confusing but i would say try to get letters for every sorority i don't know because all of girls do different things so i personally got letters of recommendation for every sorority that was at tcu so all 13 of them i had at least one letter and for some of them i had two um i don't know how much they matter in each sorority it's different for everyone but basically what a letter of recommendation is is you find an alumni of that sorority like an aunt or an aunt's friend or 
your aunt's ex-best friend's mom, like literally anybody. You can have your mom go on Facebook and be like, hi, I need an alpha, 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 letter recommendation for my daughter. Can anyone help me? And someone will probably reach out. Basically, you just get an alumni to write a letter saying that you're awesome and you would be a great fit in the sorority. And to be completely transparent, I didn't know half the women that wrote my letters of recommendation. Like, I just thought that I needed them, so I was finding people to do them for me yeah so you can get letters of recommendation i don't know how important they are but if you're able to get your hands on one then get it and then they send it to the sorority um or they email it to like the recruitment chair i think it depends but you can go on the tcu panel like, website and go on the website of each sorority and it'll tell you somewhere on their website like what you're supposed to do for letters of rec and the other thing is rifts and rifts are different than letters of rec so an alumni fills out a form for you that basically, it's almost like your resume part two. So they need your resume for that. They might need a headshot. Um, this all sounds so strange, like, but this is just how it is. I know that riffs are very important to some sororities, so just be sure to check the websites of each sorority beforehand to figure out like what you might need and you'll figure it out you'll be fine a lot of girls that come through recruitment like ha do not know about that my mom was not in a sorority i don't have sisters like i didn't know anything about it but you'll figure it out it'll be fine um and again if you guys have any questions you can just comment them below and i'll answer them yeah so now i just want to go over like some tips or like things that i would have wanted to know first tip is to be yourself which sounds so stupid but like seriously because it's really easy to tell when someone's super nervous and like not really being themselves like if you just like chill out like have a good time literally all you're doing is sitting in a room with a girl like she's a friend of a friend you're just like alone with her at lunch while your friend goes pee you just like have to talk to her but it gets easier i would say as the rounds goes on like in terms of being more comfortable with the process the first round is like such surface level conversations like you're literally just talking about where you're from like why you came to tcu my biggest tip is to just try not say one word answer if you can avoid one word answers really try to just because it's easier to keep a conversation going when there's more to go off of you know which is like common sense but you don't really think about that when you're under pressure to have a good conversation know that the actives the older girls that are recruiting you are also super nervous especially the first rounds funny story so like i said i'm a sophomore so i just was on the other side of it this past fall and i was so nervous because it's really on the older girls to keep the conversation going and if it gets awkward for us to fill the silence it's not on you so it's it's honestly scary like if you run out of questions or talking points you're just like panic i remember i sat down with my very first girl on the very first round of day one and i was so freaking nervous as an active and i literally felt like i was gonna pass out i could like feel my face flushing and the girl said to me she's like you seem so nervous like you're doing fine and i was like oh my god it was so embarrassing everybody just calms down you're gonna be fine you're literally just talking it's like not that bad another thing i want to say is to just trust the process so this sounds like super typical advice but i just say this because it really does end up working out in the best way um whether you get the sorority that you didn't think you were gonna like um you might end up loving it like they picked you for a reason and the other ones dropped you for a reason you don't want to be in a sorority that drops you you know whether it was a grade cutoff whether it was because they didn't think you would fit in um but you thought you would fit in it's like a very thought out process and there's algorithms that i don't even know like i don't know everything that goes on but it really does work out if you get caught from somewhere that you really love just know that it was for a reason and that you're gonna be fine and every single sorority at tcu has so many positive aspects to it and again it's it's just the sorority like it is not the end of the world it is just a sorority you're gonna be fine like you're gonna be fine this is such a small part of your life uh, I think I've gotten through everything I want to talk about. If you guys have any other questions, please comment them below. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe. That is about it though. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.